go back to our presentation. Now our next special object is a table of contents object. Table of contents object will create a table of contents section inside of your print output. It will create a contents window for your help formats and it will create a contents pane for HTML and HTML help. And its sole purpose in life is to do nothing but create a table of contents section. And it does so by listing headings of the topic objects that are inside of your book. So it will go to the heading field of your topic object and then display that heading in the table of contents automatically. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here. Now table of contents, go ahead and open that up. Table of contents for each one of your outputs allows you to tell author what title you would like. So table of contents title could be contents, table of contents, TOC, whatever you want it to be. You need to associate your table of contents with a media object so that author knows what page layout to give to that table of contents section. And for your print output, you can choose what levels of headings you would like to display inside of that uh, table of contents section. So right now we have this set up as showing three levels of headings. So that means all of your headings, one, twos, and threes, will display in that table of contents. You also have the option for um, print output only to include the page numbers that the uh, topic displays on, whether you'd like those numbers to be right aligned. Now you have an option down here that says add super headings. Now a super heading, I'll show you here. Let's turn on our detail view. Okay. Now notice how these level one topics here all start with a template called chapter. All right, there's a reason for that. Let's open this topic up in properties view and go to the print tab. In the print tab you have this option here called super heading. It is used for inserting a certain word before this heading such as chapter and then you can associate a numbering scheme with that super heading as well. So you may see in the user manuals or the training manuals that you have that our super heading is set to module. All right, because this is a training guide and module makes sense here for super heading. In this case, we have a chaptered book. So the superheading word that we've used in this case is chapter, and then the numbering scheme of one, two, three, that's been written out in text. So any topic based on this chapter template will then insert a new chapter into our documents. And you can choose whether or not you would like the table of contents to display that superheading or not. I'll go ahead and enable it so that you see what that option looks like. All right, I'm going to close my Word document here. Not going to save any changes to it. The reason I'm clo closing it is because AuthorIt isn't going to republish this book if the previous publication is still open. All right, it frowns upon that because what's actually happening in this publishing process is that each time you publish this book, the old file gets deleted and the new file gets created. So in your publishing directory, if you had that old publication still hanging out in your publishing folder, it would be deleted and be replaced with this new version of the file. All right, so let's go ahead and hit View Output. All right, and scroll down to our table of contents section. 
All right. So we had our table of contents to set up to show three levels of headings. So you'll see that set up here. All right. Notice how table of contents, it's just automatically inserting the topic headings of all of the topics inside of your document. In this case, the ones that are set to publish to your print output. And because we enabled the superheading option, that's why you're seeing this text here, Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3. These are the topics that had the chapter template assigned to them. Okay, so you can kind of see what's going on there. If I click on the page number, I'll show you that superheading again displays here above the topics heading. All right. So that's what the table of contents does in your scroll down in your print output. Let's take a look at what it does in some of the other output formats. Now if I was smart, I'd still have that HTML output open, but I most likely closed it. So let's go ahead and right click view published HTML pages. All right, so here's what we get in our HTML output. We get the list of the topic headings. And they're all going to be links to the topics inside of our document. These are all of the topics that were allowed to publish to our web output. All right, so they had that web checkbox enabled on the general tab. So they published here, and their topic heading was included inside of our content section.